When it comes to foldables, do you favor form or function? This is the Moto Razr Plus, or Razr 40 Ultra if you want to get European about this, and this is the Samsung Galaxy Z Flip 4, or Z Flip 4 if, well, you get the idea. One of these is the new hotness with a slick and desirable design and a slightly higher price tag to match. The other is the tried and true incumbent in this category, more refined and feature filled, though with a somewhat more dated look. So it's time to put these through their paces and decide who wins. I'm Alex Dobie, this is XDA TV, brought to you today by the Eureka Rapid Clean Pro. More on that later, let's get into it. So the greatest strength of the Razer by far has to be the design. While Samsung has kept the fundamental flip look and feel the same for basically the past four cycles, chipping away ever slightly at that display gap every year, the Razer feels like it's a generational leap ahead of even the most recent Samsung clamshell. That's even more true this year than earlier Razers, which ran the gamut from the Chini original through to the more streamlined 2022 model that ended up being a China exclusive. And the 2023 Razer is just slimmer, however you look at it, with a teardrop-shaped fold for the bendy internal screen that helps it close completely flat. That's famously not so with the Flip, which packs a pronounced air gap around its hinge. I also prefer the tapered sidewalls of the Razer versus the very blocky edges of the Samsung phone, which does little to disguise just how chunky the two halves of this phone actually are. That shouldn't really be a huge surprise when you consider how much thin and light is ingrained into the Razer's DNA even going back to the turn of the century. But it's not a total landslide victory for Motorola here. Although the Razer's display hinge is firmer than, for example, Oppo's Find N2 Flip, I still prefer the sturdier feel of Samsung's hinge. It's easier to lock in place at pretty much any angle between 0 and 180 degrees versus Moto's which just kind of flops around a bit at certain angles. It doesn't bother me all that much, but it does stand out as one area where the flip feels a bit more solid and dependable. Both phones are suitably lightweight, coming in at 188 grams for the slightly larger Razer and 184 for the somewhat smaller flip. Both of these, of course, allow you to pack a large internal screen into a tiny footprint, but the Razer's 6.9-inch display diagonal in particular stands out as notably lightweight for its size when it's fully unfurled. Both displays are high-spec foldable AMOLEDs with a few things to distinguish them. Moto boasts a higher max refresh rate, a ridiculous 165Hz compared to Samsung's 120. Honestly, when you're dealing with anything above 120 on a phone, that number's kind of meaningless, but hey, Moto gets the bragging rights there, I guess. Similarly with peak brightness, which is only really a general guide as to how bright the inner screen will look at any one time, there's 200 nits of brightness in it between 1400 and 1200 in the Razer and the Flip respectively, but you're not going to see that difference with the naked eye, and reflectivity of the plastic coating on both models feels like it's more problematic than the sheer brightness of either of the OLEDs underneath, which is another way of saying both are a little tough to use outside in bright daylight than comparable non-folding phones. Of course, the big difference with the Razer is that its outer display is that much more usable. While the Flip limits you to a pretty basic widget carousel and a slightly clumsy selfie framing viewport via its 1.9 inch cover display, Moto's 3.6 incher can run full screen Android apps with a little massaging. With the phone closed, you once again have a carousel of widgets giving you glanceable information and shortcuts to certain features. But one of those is an app launcher, letting you do anything from tap out a quick message, keep mapping directions close at hand, and even watch a full YouTube video. That last use case might sound ridiculous, but it actually works surprisingly well with the phone propped up at around a 45 degree angle on that 3.2 aspect display. I'm not going to say that the experience, generally speaking, doesn't feel a little cramped, because it kind of does. There's also the design problem that every clamshell foldable will be forced to wrestle with eventually. You can run full screen apps with a long press on the gesture area, but inevitably parts of them will be cut off by the camera protrusions. That's especially problematic in anything with software controls at the bottom of the screens, which is actually quite a lot of apps. It definitely takes some adjustment, but once you get used to it, it's a surprisingly usable miniature Android experience. And that experience of moving between screens is pretty seamless too. Close the phone up while you're using an app on the main screen and you'll get this continue shortcut letting you quickly resume it on the cover screen. While it's not quite as polished as hopping between screens on a larger foldable like the Z Fold 4, you'll need to click through a few warning messages initially for apps that aren't made for that smaller panel, Overall, Motorola's done a great job here. 
Samsung, on the other hand, has a tried and true software experience backed up by a wealth of features that don't necessarily rely on that foldable form factor. It has tight integration with Samsung's smart home wearable and tracking gadgets through smart things. Everyday tasks can be easily automated through the modes and routines feature. And although Moto also includes its own flex mode features for certain apps, there are more options for the half folded screen on the Samsung side. I definitely prefer the more stock look and feel of Moto's UI with its more subtle customization options and things like peak mode for quickly glancing at notifications in addition to all the cover display magic. But Samsung's UI is backed up by years of polish and refinement, making it every bit as competitive. This video is brought to you by the Eureka Rapid Clean Pro Cordless Vacuum Cleaner. Eureka is a company with over 100 years of innovation, and its latest Rapid Clean Pro is ultra lightweight, easy to maneuver, and built with convenience in mind. It weighs just 5.1 pounds, including the built-in battery, for fatigue-free cleaning. And you can easily turn it into a full handheld by simply using the bundled accessories. The Rapid Clean Pro employs the latest motor technology for powerful suction and is designed for multi floor use, whether it's hardwood, tiles, vinyl, laminate, or low pile rugs. And it can last as long as 40 minutes on a single charge with fast recharging to bring it back up to speed in no time. From its built in LED headlights to its advanced cyclonic filtration system, the Eureka Rapid Clean Pro is packed to the brim with techie features that make cleaning easier, more efficient, and less of a chore. This Prime Day season, you can save $35 on the Eureka Rapid Clean Pro, and you'll find similar discounts are found across the company's entire range of products. Links are in the description, and thanks to Eureka for sponsoring this video. On the inside, these two clamshells are more similar than you might expect. They both run Qualcomm Snapdragon 8 Plus Gen 1 with 8 gigs of RAM, not the very latest chip, but still a formidable performer. And 8 gigs is still enough for most things you're going to be inclined to do on a device of this size. Moto pulls ahead on storage with a base 256 gigs of internal flash to Samsung's 128. The Razer scores a slightly larger battery capacity too, 3800 versus 3700 mAh, but its larger, faster displays probably offset any lead that it might get from that. And that bears out in my experience of battery performance from both of these two foldables. Neither offers exceptional battery life in the same way you'd see from an S23 Ultra or OnePlus 11, but a single day is doable with both in my testing with around four and a half hours of screen on time. As with all foldables though, your mileage can and will vary potentially a lot depending on how much you're using that smaller cover display versus the larger internal one. Obviously on the Moto side, that's a whole lot easier to do. And yeah, both support Qi wireless charging in addition to USB PD quick charging over a wire, though Moto's is capped at 5 watts versus a more generous 10 from Samsung. Not a huge deal for me personally, I only tend to use Qi for trickle charging anyway. So cameras are a huge part of the appeal of a foldable like these because you've got the opportunity to use that outer screen and repurpose your rear cameras for selfies, giving you quality that's tough to match even from a flat flagship phone. On paper, Samsung has an optical advantage with its larger 1 of 1.76 inch main sensor versus Moto's 1 of 2.55 incher, both at 12 megapixels, and both are paired with secondary ultra wides, 12 megapixels on the flip, 13 on the razor. But I'm not going to bury the lead too much here. In actual day-to-day -day camera use, Samsung wins in just about every metric in the contest between these two models. And in certain conditions, the difference is sizable. Let's start with the ultrawide because it's probably the most stark contrast between these two. Samsung offers a vastly wider field of view from its ultrawide shooter to the point where there's a near night and day difference in the focal lengths on offer here. That just makes for less dramatic looking wide shots from the Razer camera. Definitely a big win for Samsung up front. There is a less pronounced difference in shots from the wide cameras, which offer a similar field of view across both models. But what you will notice here is a vast difference in color reproduction in a lot of scenes, particularly in daylight or slightly overcast shots. Samsung tends to amp up its colors a bit more with more saturated output coming from the flip, along with slightly cooler blues. And in some of these cloudier daylight shots, I also found Samsung was able to pull out greater color detail from the shadows. These shots, for instance, almost look like they were taken on different days. Samsung really brings out the blue sky, whereas Moto's photos look a bit more washed out. And on account of the smaller sensor size, you can see shadows being muddied a little bit here with more visible noise, especially around the edges of the frame, and more software sharpening being seen in the trees off in the distance. I also found Samsung took more pleasing portrait shots with slightly more accurate artificial depth effects around hair 
as well as more pleasing, vibrant colors that you see in other kinds of shots from the Flips 2 cameras. Once again, there's a bit of a washed out effect in portraits taken on the Moto camera. And finally, while there is no dedicated telephoto mode, both of these cameras do a decent job with hybrid digital zoom all the way up to around five times. Obviously, the color differences we already talked about apply to zoom shots too, but in terms of sharpness and fine detail, it's a very close contest between these two phones here. Surprisingly, low light is a slightly tougher call. Motorola's software night mode makes up for a lot of its hardware disadvantage here, being able to conjure up similarly bright images in darker scenes. I still think if you zoom in at a one-to-one -one ratio, you'll make out more fine detail coming from the Samsung camera and that extra bit of splash of color as well. But given the relatively small sensor Moto's using here, the performance definitely isn't horrible. And there's a lead for Samsung as well in terms of video. At our baseline resolution of 4K with 30 frames per second, Samsung produces footage with slightly better dynamic range as you'll see in the shadows and highlights here, in addition to more vibrant colors that are the trademark of most Samsung cameras. But Samsung's video stabilization is also much stronger. Notice the judders around the edges of the frame on the Razer camera that you don't get with the Galaxy. That's not present in every clip I shot with this camera, but it definitely happened often enough to become quite bothersome. Samsung's lead in both dynamic range and stabilization is even easier to see in this moving shot here, with a neon sign and bright overcast sky. It's a pretty easy win for the Galaxy. Motorola's camera undoubtedly has a lot of really fun features, especially neat tricks like the color spot mode, where you can pick out a particular hue to highlight in an otherwise monochrome reel, and the dual capture capability, which works across either photo or video. But ultimately, Samsung wins pretty easily here, just through the strength of its camera hardware and the maturity of its software processing. The Razer's camera definitely isn't bad, it's just slightly out of its depth in this particular matchup. So which of these would I pick if I was looking at grabbing a clamshell foldable today? It's a really tough call because the strengths of these two phones are so vastly different. Like I said at the top, it's much more form versus function. Moto's design is superior, and the more usable outer display brings a ton of extra utility to this form factor. All of that makes the Razer a lot more fun to use day to day, probably more than any other phone I've used this year. Yet where it falls behind, crucially, is in camera performance. That's a big deal for me personally, especially considering the gulf in performance in certain areas like video stabilization, dynamic range, and color reproduction in some situations. Samsung's camera is pretty much universally superior shot for shot across the board. And for me, I have to say that's a big enough difference to make the flip my choice in this particular matchup. Samsung's phone is also a little bit cheaper and likely to retain its value for longer, letting me pick up a decent discount on a Flip 5 or a Flip 6 when the time comes. But this really hasn't been an easy decision to make because there are so many great hardware and software features in the Razer that make this perhaps the most competent rival to Samsung's Flip in years. And it's going to be an interesting couple of release cycles coming up as we see whether Samsung can improve its form faster than Moto can tune up its camera function. That's just me though. Hit the comments, let me know which of these you choose, and be sure to subscribe for more comparisons like this one, we really appreciate it. In the meantime, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.